relationship with God the Father. Jesus plus anything else equals nothing. But Jesus plus nothing else equals everything. Well, that's good news. That's what we're talking about today, so stay tuned for the gospel truth. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry emphasizing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series that I started yesterday talking about what is a Christian. And I know that that sounds really fundamental, elementary. Many people think, oh man, I need to get healed. I need this, I need that. But you know, really, if you um, don't have a good foundation, then everything that you build upon it is going to be faulty. And I really feel like that there is a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of misconception about what true Christianity is. And so I started talking about this yesterday. Let me just mention once again that I have this uh, tape album. This is a cassette tape album. We also have this in CD. And this is a two teaching set. And we give this to every person who comes forward for salvation in our Gospel Truth seminars. And we just this week came out with a book that is this exact same teaching. And this is going to be a tremendous tool to be able to share with other people and uh, just provide them with a clear understanding of what true Christianity is. And then in the book and also here in this tape set, I have this little insert that also shows the... Uh, the next step, the next teachings. In other words, I've got over 400 and something different tapes available. I've got books, videos, uh, CDs, all of these things. And people sometimes don't know where to start. So this is my idea of the teachings that I have, the things that God has shown me that would just systematically start a brand new person on a proper road to relationship with God. So we have that in the book and in this album. And I really encourage you to get this, not only for yourself, because you need to know these foundational truths. And again, I think that misunderstanding, lack of clarity in this area shows up when it comes to us trying to receive healing or deliverance or prosperity or joy or relationships. If you don't have, if you didn't start right, you're going to wind up wrong over here. And I think that happens to a lot of people. And also, this is a great way to just share these truths with someone else. Hopefully, every one of you that does have a true relationship with the Lord is seeking to share that relationship with somebody else, whether it's a family member or somebody you work with or a neighbor or something. And sometimes we just don't know really how to represent things. Sometimes you don't know how to answer some of the questions that people have. And I believe this teaching is going to provide you with a great tool to be able to just hand this to someone else and bless them. So we've got this new book out, and I think that's going to be very good to be able to just give this to people and help them. Yesterday, I began to start sharing some of these foundational truths that makes true Christianity different from the other religions of the world. And the main point that I was getting at yesterday is that every other religion on the face of the earth puts the burden of salvation upon the individual and in some form, they basically say that you have to do this and this and this. And they have a list of things that you have to do to be accepted with God. And there's even a segment of Christianity that basically preaches that same thing. But that is not true Christianity. And that will not get you accepted by God. Because the truth is that regardless of how well you try and keep all of these do's and don'ts of any religion, we're all going to fail. No person, no person has ever kept all of the rules. No person does everything exactly the way they're supposed to do. And God doesn't grade on a curve. He doesn't just take the people who did the best because he's got a quota to meet and somebody's got to be accepted. You either have to do everything perfectly or then Christianity offers another avenue towards God, and that's through Jesus. You make Jesus your Savior, and you get accepted with God the Father, not based on your holiness or your goodness, but rather based on the fact that you put faith in a Savior. And when you do that, then Jesus becomes your Savior. You get accepted with God because of your faith in Jesus. Jesus is accepted, and if you accept Jesus, then that makes you accepted with the Father. If you reject Jesus, 
if you, you could either reject him through total rejection and saying, oh, I don't believe that Jesus exists, I don't believe that he lived, or I don't believe that he could truly save me, or I don't believe I have to do that. You could have total rejection of Jesus, or you could sit there and say, well, I believe that Jesus existed, and I believe that he'll help me a little bit, but the basis of it is I've got to do right, and I've got to keep these laws. If you add anything to faith in Jesus then you too totally void him, him being your Savior. You could say it this way, Jesus plus anything equals nothing. But Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Now, it would be implied here that Jesus and faith in him plus nothing else. Only faith in Jesus is all you need, equals everything. If you try and add anything to it, if you say, well, I believe that I have to have Jesus as a Savior, but I also have to live holy. And if I don't pay my tithes, and if I don't go to church, and if I don't do this, then what you've done is just say that Jesus isn't enough. Faith in Jesus isn't enough, but you also have to live holy. And the moment you do that, you have just diluted Jesus' atonement for you by adding yourself to it. It's like this link in a chain. You know, we say that a weak link in a chain, the chain is no stronger than its weakest link. If you put your goodness, if any of salvation is dependent upon you living up to any standard and doing a minimum number of things, then you just made yourself a link in that chain, and I guarantee you, you cannot hold the weight. You cannot be a part of this process. The only thing we have to do is to believe on Jesus and humble ourselves and put our total faith in the Lord Jesus, not faith in ourselves. That's the only thing you have to do. It is not your goodness or holiness. It's just your faith in the Lord. Now, as a byproduct of that, you could go on, and this is what the, uh, the book of James talks about and 1 John, that if you have true faith, if you really have put your faith in Jesus, then there's a change that takes place. And you do begin to start seeing the life and the nature and the character of God start manifesting through your actions. And a person who says that they have faith in God and yet there is zero proof of it in your life, well, then that person is a liar. That's what the Bible says. And I could show you many scriptures on that. That's actually another teaching. But you do begin to start reflecting the, your faith in God will affect your actions and it should be visible and there should be some proof of it. And so I agree with that 100%. But don't ever make this, uh, don't ever get this confused and make this mistake to think that it's those changes, it's your actions, it's this new life that you are acting out that produces salvation. No, it is totally faith in what Jesus has done plus nothing else. Let me use this passage of Scripture, and I just want to spend some time talking about this because this is kind of a pivotal Scripture that really salvation hangs on. Jesus said this the night before his crucifixion, talking to his disciples, and he said in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, notice Jesus did not say, I am a way, a truth, a life. There's many paths that lead unto God. This is a statement that you'll hear often by people who are new age people and uh, into, you know, into some of these other things. They'll say, well, there's many paths that lead unto God. And there are people who will sit there and say, well, Christianity's fine if you would just admit that it is just one way. But the Buddhists, the Islam... All of these, the Hindus, all of these, they're just the same. They're people seeking after God, and all paths lead to God. That is not true. That is not true. It is a lie. It's false. It's deceptive. I know that this program is being heard all around the world. Every continent on the face of the earth, people are watching this. And in other cultures outside of the U.S., some of those uh, other religions are more popular than they are here in the U.S. You can kind of get by with saying these statements. But, you know, in some other cultures, there's maybe people very offended at this because you're sitting there thinking that Christianity is narrow-minded and all of this, but it's the truth. And let me just point this out, that every other religion on the face of the earth acknowledges Jesus. Did you know that Islam acknowledges Jesus? They say that he was a prophet. 
really, there is not a single religion on the face of the earth that doesn't have to deal with Jesus because Jesus is the greatest example of love and peace and turning the other cheek and coming and laying his life down and loving other people. Every religion on the face of the earth acknowledges the existence of Jesus because he did exist. There is actually more physical proof that Jesus lived and died and rose from the dead. I mean, talking about secular, non-Christian writers. Josephus is one of them, a historian that was commissioned by the Romans in the first century A.D., and Josephus wrote about Jesus. There is historical evidence and proof, more proof of the existence, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus than there is that Caesar lived, than there is of the Roman Empire. Now, I know some of you may take issue with that, but I've read a number of sources, and there are more independent, different sources, many of them antagonistic, that confirm these facts, confirm that these things happen. Now, they may sit there and say, well, they disbelieve it, but yet the reports are given. And the point that I'm making is every religion on the face of the earth has had to deal with Jesus because he did exist. He has impacted the world. But the difference is they will say he was a good man. They will say he was a great man. They will say he was a prophet. Islam will acknowledge Jesus as a prophet but they do not acknowledge him as God. They do not acknowledge him as the Savior of the world, as the only door unto God, that all things to God have to go through him. Now, see, this is where the other religions miss it, and this is where there's people watching this program right now that you would say, well, I believe Jesus was great, and if you want to trust him, fine, but don't make it so narrow. I'm going to come back after our break and show you that Jesus left no option for any other uh, acceptance or rejection of him. We are going to take this break. Our announcer is going to share with you about how you can get some materials, and then I'll be right back. Andrew's complete teaching titled, The New You, is available in a two-part album on tape, CD, or DVD for a gift of seven pounds or more. Or you can request this teaching in book form for a gift of three pounds or more. The first audio tape or CD in this album is available for a gift of three pounds or more. But for those unable to give, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922 473 300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. And now, Gospel Truth continues. So I was sharing that Jesus has to be acknowledged as the only way, the only truth, the only life, the only way to approach unto God. Now, other religions will acknowledge that Jesus existed. They will even say that he was a great example. They will submit and acknowledge some of the things that he did because really, how do you criticize the life of Jesus? Anybody who has heard any of the truths and the stories about Jesus, there is no other figure in history that has ever laid his life down, that has loved people, that has taught loving your enemies. I mean, this is just like off the charts. There is no human person, there is no leader of any religious sect on the face of the earth that their life can even approach the life of Jesus. And so, therefore, other religions have even acknowledged the existence of Jesus and have said he's a great man, but they refuse to make him the only way unto the Father. But look what Jesus said. Again, I go back to John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You will hear some people try and say, well, Jesus never presented himself as being, you know, the only way. He never condemned all of these other religions. If There's a lot of other statements of this in John chapter 5, and I could turn to many other places, but this one is sufficient. This is Jesus speaking, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, talking about God the Father, the one and only true God. No man can approach unto God except through him. Now this forever 
changes the way that people have to look at Jesus. It is inconsistent. It is not reality. It's hypocritical, really, for a person to say, oh, Jesus was a great example. Jesus did wonderful things, and we ought to follow his example, but he isn't the only way in truth and the life. Well, see, Jesus said just the opposite. Jesus said, I'm it. Jesus said that there is no salvation in anybody else. In Acts chapter 4, I believe it's around verse 12, but it says that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved, not might be saved, but must be saved. And then Jesus said that people have to honor me exactly as they honor the Father. Let me turn over and find that verse because there's a whole group of people who call themselves Jehovah Witness, and they say that they are the true representatives of God, and uh, they will go out and proclaim that they are the only ones telling the real truth. And again, they acknowledge that Jesus existed. They will use Jesus as an example, but then they will say that they are witnesses of Jehovah, Father God, and that Jesus was not God, and they discredit him. But look at what Jesus said about himself. This is Jesus answering people who were challenging his authority that he was the Savior of the world, that he was the only way unto the Father. And look what Jesus said. It says in um, verse 22, this is John 5, 22. It says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Now, I could go into the Greek and show you all of these details, but if you want to look it up, it, it says exactly the same thing that it's saying here in English. Jesus said you have to honor him exactly as you honor the Father. And if you go into the Greek, it means identically, that Jesus is equal unto the Father. And Jesus said this in many other places. This is the reason that the religious Jews crucified Jesus is because they said he made himself equal with God. There's many places that Jesus said this. So people like the Jehovah Witnesses that say that they are representing God and they will acknowledge Jesus and honor him to a degree, but they demote him and say, oh, no, he is not God you know what, then they are not truly honoring the Father. It says if you don't honor the Son, then you have not honored the Father. You have to make Jesus equal to God. As it says over in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. And it goes on and talks about him. But when was God manifest in the flesh? It was through Jesus. Jesus was God. That's what the word Emmanuel, the angel said, Emmanuel, God with us. He was proclaimed by the angels at his birth, and they said, uh, go into the city and find Christ the Lord. The word Lord there is talking about absolute ruler. It's God Almighty. There's just so many things. So here's my point. People who say, well, I believe that Jesus existed and he was great, but don't be so narrow-minded as to say that you have to make Jesus your Savior, that you have to be a Christian, that you have to have faith in Jesus as your Savior. You could also be a Hindu or a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever and obtain unto God in relationship with him that way. You cannot say that. You either have to make Jesus a total charlatan and crook or you have to make him God because he said he was God. He said, you have to honor me exactly as you honor the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So either Jesus was a liar and a deceiver because he claimed things about himself that weren't true, and therefore that makes him a charlatan. That makes him somebody that should not be revered, but instead he ought to be somebody that we criticize and shun and turn away from. That either has to be one option, or if what he said about himself was true, then there is no other way unto the Father. There is no other path unto God the Father. You must go through Jesus. Jesus is either who he said he was, or he was nothing. And you cannot be intellectually honest and approach him any other way. Jesus is the central figure of the entire human race. Everything revolves around him. There is no other religion 
There is no other approach unto God except through Jesus. And again, the way that you understand this, I mentioned this more on my program yesterday, but you have to understand that it's not God accepting you based on your individual performance because all of our performance has come short of the minimum standard. There is nobody breathing who are who has ever breathed on the face of this earth who deserved relationship with God. Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. All of us. Not most of us. Not a lot of us. All of us. You take the holiest person who has ever lived on the face of the earth and they deserve to go to hell. You know what? I have never said a word of profanity in all of my life. I've never taken a drink of liquor. I've never smoked a cigarette. I have been Mr. Righteous. I was raised in a Christian home. I lived a holy life. And you know what? Many of you who are trying to be good and trying to earn your relationship with God, you would like to live as holy as I have lived, thinking that would be enough. And I'm telling you that God revealed it to me in no uncertain terms that even though I had lived a relatively holy life compared to other people, who wants to be the best sinner to ever go to hell? I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I humbled myself. And I've received Jesus as my Savior. And I'm going to be accepted with God because of what Jesus did for me, not because of what I have done for Jesus. My faith is in a Savior. And my point is that if I have lived holier than you have, and yet I had to have a Savior, then I can guarantee you, you have to have a Savior. Every last one of us have to have a Savior. And this is what all of the other religions of the world miss. They do not have a Savior. You know, it's amazing. I don't think that mankind, a human being on his own, left to himself, would have ever, ever, ever have come up with the idea of God becoming a physical human being, living holy for us, purchasing for us what we could not purchase because we had condemned, been condemned, and then taking our sin and our guilt and our punishment upon himself and bearing it. You know, I don't think that anybody could ever conceive of something like that. There is no other religion that has anything that is a uh, comparison to Jesus. But in every other religion, they acknowledge a God, they acknowledge a heaven and a hell, but it's all based on your performance. If you will shave your head, put on a saffron robe, shake a cup, take an oath of poverty, if you will deny yourself, if you will have a jihad and kill the infidels, it's all based on what you do. But you know what? Christianity, it's not based on what you do. It's based on what was done for you as a love gift, and it's just a matter of will you accept it? Will you receive it? And if you've understood what I've said today, you know, this should open some of you up to true salvation because there's some of you that probably believe that God exists. You believe that Jesus lived and you may have acknowledged that he exists. You may have even prayed and asked for help, but you've never fully understood that it's not based on your performance. You were trying to live holy and then use Jesus and hope that he would make up the difference. But maybe today a light has come on on the inside of you and you've seen that regardless of how bad you are, it doesn't matter if you have murdered people, if you've lied, if you've stolen, if you are an adulterer, whatever you've done, did you know that regardless of what you have done, Jesus paid for your sins. He took your sins into his own body on the tree, and he suffered for them. And Jesus is offering you salvation as a gift, not something you purchase, not something that you trade in your goodness for, but it's a gift. And if you would humble yourself and receive salvation as a gift, make Jesus your personal Lord, you could be born again. You could have eternal life. And the Lord loves you so much that he will save you, and he loves you so much that he won't leave you the way you are. He will change you, and you'll become a brand new person. Boy, this is good news. You know, I've got some product out on this. We've got this tape album. We've got a brand new book out on this. And we've got people that would love to pray with you. So I encourage you to please call. Please take advantage of these materials. And then make sure that you join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth.
Andrew's complete teaching titled, The New You, is available in a two-part album on tape, CD, or DVD for a gift of seven pounds or more. Or you can request this teaching in book form for a gift of three pounds or more. The first audio tape or CD in this album is available for a gift of three pounds or more. But for those unable to give, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922-473-300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. Again today, I'd like to point out that we have people standing by at our phone center right now. We have a phone center in uh, Birmingham, England that services all of the European, African, Indian countries. We have a phone center here in Colorado Springs. And these people will not only take your call and send you the products that we're offering, but you know there are many of you that are finally understanding what true salvation is. Maybe you've been trying to be good and yet you can't say that you've ever really experienced a change. It's not like you're born again. You know what? You could experience that today if you'd turn from trusting in yourself and make Jesus a Savior. And these people would love to pray with you. So we have that number on your screen. Please call today. I'm coming to Europe for a series of meetings this October in the first part of November. First of all, I'm going to be in Marseille, France on the 26th and 27th of October. And then that evening, October the 27th, I'm going to be in Nice, France. I'll also be there the next day. And then we're going to the Czech Republic. That's the 30th and the 31st of October. On November the 1st through the 4th, I'm going to be doing a conference in Germany. And I'm really excited. A lot of leaders are coming to that conference. And then we're going to wind up with a minister's conference in England on the 5th through the 7th of November. If at all possible, I'd encourage you to join me. God is going to be touching lives and good things will happen. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more gospel truth. Every other religion on the face of the earth ascribes punishment to you proportional to how you've lived. But in Christianity, you don't get what you deserve. Your punishment was placed upon a Savior. He died and bled and suffered for you. And all he asks from you is that you would quit trying to save yourself and quit trusting in your own goodness and quit operating in arrogance to the point that you think you are good enough that God owes you something. And instead, you would just humble yourself and receive salvation as a gift. And if you will do that, then Jesus becomes your Savior and you are exempt from punishment because Jesus took your punishment and not only did he exempt you from punishment, but he literally gives you his righteousness, the holiness, the goodness that he deserved that was characteristic of him. He took your sin upon himself and he gave you his righteousness.